All right, this chapter is over linear motion. Um, we are only going to go, um, we're going to do portions for point 0.1 through 4.4, and then we're going to cover 4.7. So these are the sections we're going to cover before um, finals. Uh, 4.1 is relative motion, 4.2 is speed, 4.3 is velocity, 4.4 is acceleration, and 4.7 is graphing those components. So when you set up your your um, Cornell note style, um, this should be linear motion, and then I want you to include, give me a moment, I saw this nonsense, this is going to be notes on relative motion again, yes, relative motion. and speed. That's an and symbol, sorry. And speed. Okay, this is all part of chapter four. We're only doing the first half of chapter four. Okay, um, first thing you should be aware of over here in the side, you might say motion. Oops, sorry. Motion should be a side thing. Should be one of your headings. Um, you know it's everywhere. Like cars have it, stars have it, everything has motion. Okay, um, living or non-living things have motion. Um, how do we quantify? So how do we quantify motion? We do rate how much of it over how much time. Okay, so amount of something over time. Okay, so how fast does it happen? Does it take two hours for you to go two miles or does it take you two seconds to go two miles? We don't know, um, but that's how we quantify it. Okay, linear motion. This is what we're talking about in this chapter. Linear motion is in a straight path. Okay, motion is one direct line. Okay, once you stop going in a straight line, um, we're it's considered acceleration. So when we're going in a straight path, it is um, it is just speed. Okay, motion in a straight path. Things you should need to be aware of. When we're dealing with scalar quantity, we're doing, dealing with distance. So these are going to be key terms here. When we deal with vector quantities, we're talking displacement. So right now we're focusing on the scalar component, distance and speed. All right. Once you start talking about vector quantities, we're going to talk velocity. And velocity have direction. Okay, so we're going to focus on scalar right now. Okay, take a look at this graphic. So blue represents distance, red represents displacement. Notice the displacement arrow gets gradually shorter and longer depending on the position of the little ladybug. At the end of the day, they're just, displacement is just the distance from point A to point B. Not how we got there, it's just a direct straight line path from A to B. Distance is how many waggles along the way this ladybug took, all right, to get from point A to point B. So distance is going to be a lot greater. Displacement is just covering up oh, while well, we went from A to B. Um, oftentimes we'll say this is like as the crow flies. So as the crow flies from school to your house, it's only three miles, but because we have to take all the neighborhood roads and highways and stuff, it actually takes six or eight miles to get here or whatever. Okay. Okay, new vocab words that you should probably, or important vocab word that we've been talking about. Sorry, not new. When we discuss motion from here on out, from this point forward, when we discuss motion, we're considering it relative to the surface of the earth. Okay. Motion is always relative. It totally just depends, like, what you're comparing it to. If you see me running, right now you're comparing me running or moving. So you see me in this little picture up on the upper hand side. You see me moving. How can you tell? Well, compared to the wall behind me, I'm getting closer and farther. So that's what it's relative to. Um, when you're walking, you know you're walking because you're moving across the... Um, the ground. What if I move this? Am I moving? Or is the computer moving? 
right? That's relative motion compared to what? So when we are talking from here on out, we're, when we talk about motion, we're relating it to the surface of the earth. You definitely need to write both of these. And this should be a header. Okay. We talked about this all last chapter. So here's an interesting question. So what if a car is moving at 98 kilometers per hour and it gets hit from behind by a car going 100 kilometers per hour? Is it going to feel that much of a difference? No, it's going to be a 200 kilometer per hour change. That's not very fast compared to the speed that they're originally going. Okay, so that change in motion from in these cars is not significant or not hugely significant because it was already going fast. Okay, so I like you're driving on the highway going 60 miles an hour, somebody rear ends you, they get you straight in the back then it might bump you a little faster, but you won't necessarily go crazy unless it's a weird angle hit. Here's some examples. There's Jill and her friend Bill or something. Um, the girl on the side of the road saw Jill going 25 miles an hour. Bill, on the other hand, over here, doesn't see her moving at all because she's in the bus and relative to the bus, she's not moving. Now, Jill sees the cookie going 30 miles an hour because, in her perspective, the bus isn't moving. But the lady on the side of the road sees the cookies going 55 miles an hour because the bus is going 25 and then the cookie is going 30. So, you add those together and that gives your total speed. So, not only is she seeing the bus, but also the cookie which the cookie's moving really fast, comparatively, to the ground, anyway. Okay, speed, here's our next term, speed. There are all different ways to measure speed. It's some sort of distance over time, all right? That's all the slide is getting at. Snails, two meters a day, indie racers, 300 kilometers per hour. Space shuttle, 8 kilometers per second. We have distance and we have a time. These individual distances are irrelevant. It's just to give you an idea of how we measure speed. Okay, it's how fast. Speed is how fast? And it's a scalar quantity. Okay, it only has a number, no direction. Okay, when describing two units of measurement, we talked about distance or time. We just said that. Speed, so here's an equation you're going to have to know. S equals D over T. Okay, you have to know that. It's going to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, instantaneous speed is speed at one particular moment. I'm driving on the highway. Here I am. I'm driving. Look at my speedometer right now. I'm moving 60 miles an hour. In another couple of minutes, I'm moving 62. Then I'm going down to 61, whatever. It's that instant, okay? Speed varies with the amount of time you're driving your car. As you're learning to drive, when you're in the highway, you're not always perfectly at 60. Even when you put on cruise control, it kind of varies between about five mile difference. Okay, so the shorter the time period, the more accurate you are at calculating instantaneous speed. Okay, we calculate the speed, instantaneous or average, by doing change in time. Delta is change in. So the equation you need here for instantaneous speed, speed instantaneous, is little distance over the change in distance d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. Oops, that's t1. Okay, and this is a very short time interval. Look, very short. Seconds, like a second or two. Okay, your average speed is total distance over time, okay? So this is going to be a lot greater time, and it doesn't necessarily, so you're driving to school, we don't stop the time because we stopped at a stoplight. That still gets included. 
all right, you get stuck in traffic, that's still your average speed. You still have to count the whole length and how much time did it take you to go those 30 miles to get to school, okay? It's still gonna be change in distance over change in time, but the great, the difference between the two is gonna be greater. So it's D2 again, minus D1. We often call this D, sorry, I'll do D final and D initial, okay? Minus time final, minus time initial, okay? And the time difference might be a lot greater this time. Okay, again, distance is, dealing with every twist and turn along the way. If you get distracted and stop at the gas station, we still count that as your average time, okay? So here are your two times, and you measure that actual distance. The longer the time period, the closer you are, you are at count, the more it leans to average speed, okay? Okay, try this. Referring to the two figures, calculate the difference between the signals. How would you calculate it? Obviously it's five. How do you do this? You would take the final distance minus the initial. Okay, the final was eight meters. The initial is three meters. Do the math and you get five meters. So the answer is C. Make sure you have this written down in your notebook. Okay. The speedometer in every car also has an odometer that records a distance. The odometer reads um, zero at the beginning and 35 kilometers after a half hour. What's the average speed? So you would do your math. You're going to say um, distance 35 minus zero. And then your time is 30 minus zero is 35 over 30. And you're going to have to do the math there. Would it po be possible to attain this average speed? Never exceed. No. We'll talk about that. Um, can is not possible because you would, um, unless you, to get the average, you have to have a little bit more and a little bit less. Okay. Take a moment, calculate this. Okay, last thing I want to go over, graph of constant speed. Ooh, that's a terrible graph. Okay, try again. Graph is time over distance. If you're going at constant speed, one, if these were all markers of seconds, one second you might go one meter. 2 seconds, 2 meters. This is constant. If it's a curve, if it's a curve, the instantaneous speed. So, if it's a curve line, your instantaneous speed is a tangent, which would be like that. Okay? So, at this particular point, what is the slope of that particular point? Okay. This kind of walks through it. Um, I'm going to strike this. So, ignore that. Okay, make sure you have these notes. We'll do uh, velocity and acceleration next class.